How's it going, guys? The other day when Matt LaFleur was talking about the wide receiver group and wanting to add a veteran presence to that group, he kind of got me thinking, who the hell's left? After a few weeks of passing and where I was kind of hoping we would go for Robert Woods to start off, Robert Woods was signed before the official date of the free agency. And with our, despite having $22 million on paper available, we were actually very tight against the budget, especially with the impending Aaron Rodgers trade. Then you have to account for all the rookies and who knows what other picks we're going to get from the Jets. So really, we don't have much wiggle room and we can't offer too much. If we were, they'd probably have to be four million or less on the cap if we were to sign a receiver or even trade one. And in going through the list of who is available, the list is very, very small. And there are some notable names, especially if you're looking for a veteran receiver. I feel like if you're going to add a veteran presence to the group, they should have had some type of success in the league. It'd be kind of weird to go for a receiver where, yes, they've been in the league for six years, but why would you add them if they haven't had success? Either A, they're just not talented enough and can't get it done, or maybe they have a work ethic problem, or they're not doing something right. And so I feel like if you're adding a veteran presence, they should have had some type of success. So looking at that, who's left? Well, the top one is obviously Odell Beckham. There's no way we're going to get him. There's no reason to sign him. I feel like he's going to want to go on another Super Bowl run. There's been a lot of rumors he's probably going to go to the Jets because he's on Aaron Rodgers' demand list. So he's not going to come here. Then you have Randall Cobb, of course, who's said he's coming back this year. Also probably going to go to the Jets. He's not going to come back to us. He's come back for one year, probably for a Super Bowl run with Aaron Rodgers, as that's his best friend. So he's off the list. Then you have Jarvis Landry. Interesting prospect. I'm not sure where Landry's wants are. Is he going to want to go for a Super Bowl run, especially after kind of playing in mediocrity? He is a very, very good locker room presence guy. So if we were able to get him, especially since he's had a down past couple of years, that'd be awesome. I think he'd do well, especially with Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs and bringing them along as they continue to progress into their second year in the NFL. So if we were able to get Jarvis Landry on a nice cheap deal, that'd be a great target. But as of right now, there hasn't been any rumors, nor have there really been any rumors of who we're looking at. Next up, Julio Jones. Julio Jones, his name speaks for itself. I feel like he's probably going to be looking for another Super Bowl run after joining Tampa Bay, and while their hopes definitely fell short, he's been very injury prone, but he is a really good talent when healthy and a really good locker room presence. It's just I don't feel like, A, he's going to want to sign with us because we're not really a Super Bowl contender at this rate, and B, he might still command a decent amount of money just because of his name clout. And then the other name that I saw that wasn't really on many lists, and it's kind of an out there. It would be one of those, depending on what kind of contract we would be able to get them for. One of those high risks, not high risk, high reward, low risk kind of deals, depending on what we could sign them for. And that's Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay is he he was abysmal with the Giants. He practically did nothing, and he was way overpaid. But before the Giants, with the Lions, he looked like he could be a legitimate top 10, top 15 receiver in this league and just balled out with the Lions. And granted, he had Stafford thrown to him. So I'm curious if it's because he's going from Stafford to Danny Dimes, who's he hasn't really shown he can pass. Even last year where he had a good year, his passing stats were nothing great. So I don't know if it's a product of, hey, he's got... Daniel Jones thrown to him, the Giants, or what? None of the receivers seem to be able to produce over there, despite the talent they possess or how it seems like it possess. Because I remember seeing Darius Slate, and I thought he could potentially be a top 20, top 30 receiver, and he's kind of just there. So I don't know entirely why he fell off. And he'd be one of those players that would be kind of a player of the Packers target. He had a high RAS score coming out of the uh, combine with an 8.94, 6.4 height, and ran a 4.5. So he's got that big build 
and decently fast receiver with a high RAS score that the Packers love going for. He's had a rough two years with the Giants, so his price tag is going to come down, but he's had success. So I feel like that might be one of the top targets, depending on the asking price that the Packers actually go for. And I think that would actually be a pretty good sign to help Christian Watson and also Romeo Dobbs come along board. Same thing with Samari Torre, because I think Samari Torre has a place in this league. He's pretty darn good. And at the age of 29, he's not super old, but he's also not young. He's in that medium point where he's probably should be at the prime of his career. And this is where it might be interesting what he tries to go for or if he goes for a one year prove it deal, which will work out for us greatly. But that remains to be seen. And then on the other end, since that's all that's really left, that's viable, in my opinion, in the free agent market, trade targets. A lot of people, when it was heard, DeAndre Hopkins is on the trade block. Let's go get him. There's no way. And it kind of doesn't make sense for us. As much as I would love DeAndre Hopkins on this team, we're not trying to go on a Super Bowl run. Yes, we would love to surround Jordan Love with talent, but he's going to cost way too much. And what they're probably asking for, we're not going to want to pay. So I just don't see DeAndre Hopkins being a viable source. And then you're going to have to rework his contract. I don't think he's going to want to do that or to what we may want from him. So he's not going to be a good trade target for us. Then that just kind of leaves the Jets. I feel like there might be a receiver connected to this. Elijah Moore, he got traded over, and that's kind of fine. We did have him as a trade target, but but did we really want a receiver that had a lot of beef with Mike LaFleur, Matt LaFleur's brother, and pretty much wanted out of the New York Jets because of him. I don't think that would have been a good situation for us as there's already been some bad beef between the family. I mean, it's his brother and they're they're in good terms. So I don't think that would have been a good trade for us. So Elijah Moore not coming to the Packers. It's actually probably a good thing. And then that leaves Corey Davis, whose contract is a little bit much and he would have to restructure it if we were going to take on that contract. Or Denzel Mims. And Denzel Mims, in my opinion, is not really a veteran receiver. Veteran receiver. Since he's only been in the league about three or four years. And he hasn't had success. Like, he was supposed to be a pretty good receiver. And he's done nothing. And that could be on the parts, well, it's the Jets. But he started slowly getting out class. I mean, Corey Davis is Corey Davis. But was also pushed out of the lineup by Elijah Moore, who is now pretty much irrelevant with the Jets. And at one point, Braxton Berrios. So I don't know if Denzel Mims would satisfy that veteran wide receiver group. He might still be part of these trade talks. And it could be, one of the, another, once again, one of those low-risk, high-reward type plays or moves that the Packers tend to make. Especially since he's still on his rookie deal. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. But when I think of veteran leadership and a veteran presence for the locker room, Denzel Mims is not the guy that I'm thinking of. Which lastly also brings me to rumors where we might try to go for Jerry Judy. He's kind of in the same camp as Denzel Mims. Jerry Judy, very good talent, hasn't really done much in the league. He's still on his rookie deal, and that means he's going to be looking for an extension, which I don't think we're going to want to try to extend him. Especially with Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs, he's not going to get the starting position. Well, if Watson and Dobbs continue to trend, which I really feel like they will and hope they do, that means we're not really going to sign Jerry Judy to a large contract. And I just don't see why we would actually trade for him. If anything, we would go draft a receiver. I, I, I know, draft a receiver. That's something we don't like doing, especially in the first round. But... In the second round, we could just draft a receiver who we feel has potential. And we've done very good in the second round with receivers. So why go for Jerry Judy, give us some draft capital, and we're going to have to pay that man in a couple years. I just don't see the point in that. But it's going to be interesting which route the Packers go. And I think this domino will fall a lot faster once, once again Rodgers gets traded. There's still a lot being held up from this Rodgers trade and what the organization is going to want to do because... It's also going to be determined by how much of Aaron Rodgers' contract we decide to take on ourselves for the Jets. So all this is probably still being held up because of Rodgers. And I, despite that, even if we do add a veteran presence, I still feel like the Packers are going to draft a receiver. 
Hopefully in the second round. I, I don't think we should spend our first round pick unless we have two. But even then, I still don't think we should spend two of our first round picks on a receiver. But maybe. We'll see. But let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And as always, go back, go.